Vice President Kamala Harris finally called for an immediate ceasefire. The threat of Arab Americans and our allies remaining uncommitted has resulted in the Biden administration trotting Kamala Harris out to unconvincingly act like she's horrified for the Palestinian people. If she and Biden actually cared, they'd ban weapons transfers to the country that brazenly flouts international law and genocides communities in their territory on the basis of their background. Israel is a nation radicalized. And this whole thing feels like the Biden administration is testing out whether Kamala can make it work, but she can't. What's incredibly predictable, however, is that they're actually getting the woman of color to say the one thing they've been too chicken shit to say, cease fire, but only for six weeks. Unfortunately, Kamala is not it. She cannot save them, and if it isn't bad enough, they're trying to gaslight us during a genocide of their own making. And we all caught Kamala's pause before she said six weeks. There must be an immediate ceasefire. Yeah. For at least the next six weeks. She was waiting for applause. It's a reflection of political performativity and insincerity. And the citizens of the United States no longer buy into this. As I watched parachutes of food aid drop down into Gaza, I read a tweet that said, quote, this is legitimately a scene from The Hunger Games. Like the Capitol spectators and game creators programmed drones are dropping aid for Katniss and other players. I read that book when I was a teenager and distinctly remember how fucking creepy that scene was to me. And now it's manifested in the real timeline as a PR stunt for this country I was born into. This is the most dystopian shit. Meanwhile, as all of this is happening, a child named Yezen Kaferni, a nine-year-old Palestinian boy with cerebral palsy, was forced to flee the Israeli invasion of Beit Hanun with his family to southern Gaza. Recently, Yezen's health deteriorated due to a shortage of food and oxygen. Yezen just passed away because of insufficient health care and malnutrition. He died at Abu Yusuf and Najjar Hospital, and his life ended because of the Israeli blockade on Gaza. Israel and America are depriving over two million people in Gaza of food and water right now. And as they are doing that, they're bombing the area constantly. In fact, a mother of two newborn twins named Rania Abu Anza lost her babies to Israeli airstrikes when they hit her family's home in Rafah late Saturday. Israel killed her five-month-old twins, her husband, and 11 other relatives, and they left another nine missing under the rubble. Unfortunately for the Biden administration, we hear these stories, and people like Yezen and Rania and their families are real people to us. And the juxtaposition of people dying and our own president and vice president lying as they're killing them reveals a level of depravity that goes beyond what we can stomach. And it will end up collapsing the United States, whether they can course correct in time or not. A growing majority of progressives realize that their own safety means nothing as long as the price is right.